So there we go, nine down for the Premier League weekend. One still to go. It all began with a five-star show for Liverpool at Watford. Five goals at Villa Park. Six at the KP as Leicester beat Manchester United. Routine for Manchester City. No goals at Carrow Road. Big first win of the season for Ralph Hasenhutl and Southampton. Brentford pushed the European champions Chelsea all the way, uh, but they won uh, the West London derby in the end, Thomas Tuchel side. Earlier today, one goal was enough from Angelo Ogbonna for West Ham to win away again at Goodison Park. Uh, Everton beaten for the first time at home under Rafa Benitez and we've just watched Newcastle 2, Spurs 3. Still to come, of course, the Monday night football and the subplot of Arsenal Crystal Palace is Patrick Vieira goes back to North London. So Chelsea, as we knew, edged back to the top with that win at Brentford, a point ahead of Liverpool, who are a point ahead of City. Brighton are the other team in those Champions League places, but Spurs are the big movers. They are up to fifth now, 15 points, level on points with Graham Potter's side, a point ahead of Manchester United. West Ham went up to seventh, level with United and Everton on 14. And at the bottom, as you can see, three teams all waiting for their first win and all three of them in the drop zone. Norwich, two points from a possible 24. And then Newcastle and Burnley, three points from a possible 24. Burnley, three behind Leeds, Watford, and then comes Southampton and Crystal Palace. And Newcastle stay second bottom. New era, but no change of luck. All the reaction on the way. From St James's. Park. All the reaction to come from St James's Park. Spurs three, Newcastle two. Let's look back on the events before we get that reaction, and go all the way back to one minute seven seconds into the game. Sold out St James's Park. First game under the new owners, and this looked like the dream script at this stage, Alan. Crying out for a good start, and here we go. They got exactly that. What a goal it was. Worked it really well down that right hand side, and the movement from Callum Wilson in the middle. He just wants the right ball in. From Mankio, he gets that, but his movement is superb. As he, as I said at half time, the defender doesn't know where he is. Great positioning. Then he can make his, his run at the right time, and he did that, and it was perfection. Great cross, and it deserved a good header, and it got that. And it was in the back of the net. Um, but I'm reliably informed that was Newcastle's only effort on target during the game. Indeed. <laughs> And that really says everything. And, and Spurs just came straight back at them, didn't they? They did, yeah. I didn't think it was any panic in the, in the uh, Spurs ranks. They always knew that the, <coughs> the defensive side and the midfield side of the team, what they're playing against, was very, very poor. Um, they would have done their analysis throughout this season. They would have looked how poor they are. No cohesion, no togetherness. The whole back four players, individuals. The midfield never engaged the midfield of Spurs. And he just popped it around them, get the ball into Son, get it to Lucas Moura, get it to Harry Kane. And you will score goals. And then Don Bele fancied it tonight. You know, he's, he's dangerous. You know, he can, he's, a, he's a maverick. And when you ever need to defend and Don Bele there, as soon as he gets that ball, they switch the play out. He just drops off the pace there and he wants that ball there. But they see him there. I'm not sure he can engage him there, but certainly as that ball's on its way from Reggio and he has to engage and he knows he wants to try and open it up with his right foot and bend it into the far corner. So you have to try and block. Your approach, Lascelles gets it all wrong. His approach is wrong and he blocks Darlow's vision and he just whips it round his ear off. Very good finish. You're a frustrating Dombele. player, Dombele, and Dombele, because he's, there's no doubt he's got the talent in there. And you just wish, I think, for, from a Spurs point of view, yeah. he could do that more often because he played really, really well today. Absolutely. That's perfect for him today, though. No one ever engaged him. He never even got tackled. He got fouled by John Joe Shelby, as we're going to show you later. But no one ever pressed him. If you know players like that, let have time. He's got ability. He come there for a reason because he's got ability. But everyone's got ability when you give him time on the ball and you get his head up and you pick his passes, decide when he wants to dribble. He's got some flavour, the boy. But he needs to do it on a more regular basis. But he's not going to have an easier afternoon than he's had tonight. The frustrating thing from a Newcastle point of view is, is you're looking at the midfield and say, right, what are you offering us, guys? Are you going to give us protection? Mm. Or are you going to give us support up front? And today they did, they did none of that. They didn't offer anything running past the forwards in terms of helping them out. They didn't do anything in terms of protecting the back four. And that's why the midfielders, in particular in Dumbly, found it so easy today. And uh, you were worried about Harry Kane getting his first goal of the season. Uh, five in his last three trips now to St James's Park. So wonderful finish, first of all, but Newcastle's defence aren't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many things wrong with it. I've just mentioned the midfield. One of the midfield 
has to go up tight and, and, and get to Hoiberg on the pass. But Harry Kane's run is perfection. He's waiting for the ball now. But once Hoiberg gets onto this ball, he receives it from Skip, I think it is. A midfielder has to get to him. OK, they don't go to him. The defence can no longer hold that high line now because anyone with half an ounce of ability to be able to turn and pick your head up and pick a pass, you can pick that pass in behind when you've got a static back four who has stood still trying to play offside. Anyone can play against that. And Harry Kane had a field day in there today. He just needed the finish. That was a quality finish. And, but everything else about it could have been prevented mm. from a Newcastle point of view. From Tottenham's point of view, it's a brilliant goal. But defensively and from the midfield, from Newcastle, it's hopeless. Great finish. But yeah, but clever, he, clever, clever, clever. But the goalkeeper makes it so easy out. Yeah. I mean, we, he never ever looks at him. He only looks last minute. Does he make his mind up then? Yeah. You should know. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, he, 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 it's, it's a game of bluff. Who's going to blink first? The goalkeeper has made his move. Harry Kills, thanks very much. What? This is the only time he looks out. Look. There. But instinctively, he senses the goalkeepers. You don't come need to look. He knows, where, he knows exactly. A top, yeah. a top forward knows exactly where he is. He can sense the goalkeeper coming out. Yeah. All he needs to now, and I say all he needs to do now, I mean, that's a very difficult and a very clever finish, is have the execution. And, I mean, I was going to say the form he's in. He hasn't, he hasn't scored in the league this season, has he? Um, but he loves coming to St James's Park. He likes playing against Newcastle. And I just knew he was going to be a bit of a party pooper today. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before Harry Kane got back amongst the league goals. That's low starter in the, in the Premier League. He would have liked to have started quicker. He's seen the likes of Mo Salah and Lukaku, mm. even though he hasn't scored him for six now. Get, getting away from him, Vardy. So he want to be chasing them prizes. Harry has be quick to tell us he scored 10 goals this season. You know, one, one in the Premier League, but that's just all he needs now. He just kick-start now and he will go on and score 20-plus goals this season for Tottenham. Well, you know him well. And we can talk live to him now, Tim, as well, if you just turn round, because there is Harry Kane <laughs> uh, live at St James's Park. Great to see you and well done. Back amongst the goals, big three points. Yeah, thank you. Um, no, obviously, a uh, great game for us. Uh, we knew it was going to be difficult with obviously um, the, the situation surrounding Newcastle at the moment. So, um, yeah, we, we obviously conceded early, but after that we responded really well. And um, obviously we'd have liked it to have been a bit more when, once they went down to 10 men. But credit to Newcastle, they, they battled until the end. And, uh, but the most important thing is that we got the three points. And what was it like in the build-up? Because all the talk was, was of Newcastle, the takeover, the new owners. Hardly anyone was mentioning Tottenham, Harry. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of excitement uh, up this side of, uh, of the country. So, um, no, it's understandable. But obviously, we knew uh, we had a job to do. We knew that if we played to our best ability, that we could win the game. And uh, like I said, I thought we controlled the game really well, kept possession. Probably the best game we've probably had in possession. Um, and then we took the chances. It was just a shame that we didn't finish the game off. But uh, overall, it's a performance that we can be happy with and uh, look forward to the next one. Harry, we're aware of your love playing against Newcastle, particularly at St James's Park. You seem to have a, a nasty habit of putting the ball in the back of the net. But just on, on your run, we've just been analysing your goal there. Your run is timed to perfection. You're just waiting for the ball. We notice that you have one sly look at the goalkeeper. Are you aware of where you are at all times? You've just got to finish it off. And, and were you aware that you had that much time and space and you're just waiting for the goalkeeper to make his move first? Yeah, well, when, when I made the run, I knew I was behind the centre-backs, but I knew the full-backs were a little bit deeper, so I could kind of see across the line. Um, and, yeah, kind of when the ball went through, I could just see... I, I'd done me a favour, I think, that the keeper was in orange, because I could just see the corner of my eye that he was coming out. Um, and then I just knew if I got good contact and lifted it over, then it was a goal. Obviously, it's a shame I couldn't go off and celebrate, but I knew it was a close one, and obviously, once the referee was taking a bit of time, I knew I had a chance of it, of it being a goal, and thankfully it was. Harry, you're off and running now, mate. I think you're going to go on a run and there's someone sitting opposite me hopes you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not true, Harry. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll see what happens, obviously. Uh, no, of course, as a striker, uh, it's nice to get off the mark in the Premier League. Um, and, yeah, the most important thing was we won the game. But hopefully this can obviously kickstart me and kickstart the lads and uh, we can go on a nice little run. We've got some tough games. I think we've got West Ham and, and then Manchester United, so, um, yeah, it doesn't get any easier. So we just have to keep this form, keep this momentum uh, and, and hopefully we can go on a nice run. Is that the key word, momentum? Back-to-back -back wins now and, and to do that today? 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, it's never easy coming off the international break, uh, having little time to prepare. Obviously, some players only coming back yesterday and the day before. Um, but yeah, obviously, we won the last game just before it, so we knew if we could win this, and, and we're going to a difficult spell now with some tough games uh, away from home. So, uh, of course, that's that's what it's about. We just got to keep focused, keep working hard. We go away to Europe in the in the midweek, and then look forward to the game on the weekend. Harry, you had it. You had a, uh, a tough summer with England, and of course, we all know. The speculation, um, what went on or what didn't go on, how how difficult or how easy has it been to try and put that to the back of your mind to just get on with football? We know you hadn't scored in the league up, and, up until today, but sort of mentally, has that been tough for you? No, I think whenever you play a major tournament with England, um, obviously doing so well as well and getting to the final and, and just missing out and then all of a sudden three weeks later you're playing back in the Premier League sometimes it takes you a little time to just adapt and, and refresh and, and get back to get back to normal and um, like I say there was a lot of talk around me in the summer but I, I was focused obviously I'm here I'm, I'm ready I'm working hard for the team I'm doing my best for the team I'm one of them players who never panics if I'm not scoring in a few games you know I know if the chances come I'll be there to take them and uh, like I said I had one today and took it um, so that's my focus, it's just doing my best for this team uh, and that's what I'll continue to do. 88 Premier League away goals now, Harry. Only uh, Wayne Rooney scored more. You've gone past one Alan Shearer today anyway in one of the records. <laughs> that's a nice place to do it then. <laughs> and just finally, um, I mean, we're all smiles at the moment. We did see that stoppage in the first half. Two of your teammates deserve a special mention. Yeah, we just want to say, um, obviously, our, our biggest wishes to... Uh, uh, the, the guy in the stands, it was, a, it was a terrible incident, terrible to see. Uh, we hear that he's stable now, I think, so that's, that's a great plus. Um, but, yeah, just full credit to kind of the medical staff um, and some of the players who see it early and reacted early and got the game stopped and got the help there as quick as possible. So, um, yeah, we wish him all the best from me and obviously all the team, uh, all the staff, and uh, hopefully he's on a, he's on a good road to, to recovery now. Very well said and very well played. Thank well you very done. much indeed. Well done, mate. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Harry Kane live for you at St James's Park. 3 2 Spurs winning against Newcastle. We can hear from his manager now. Here's the thoughts of. No, congratulations. Mm. This was never going to be the most straightforward of challenges. How do you feel you handled it? I think we handled it well, um, but we didn't start it well. Uh, we knew what was coming, uh, what's going around the club, Newcastle, the atmosphere. And they come and we didn't be able to end, but we react really, really fast and really good. And we play really good football, we achieve goals, we control the game. It was a positive performance. Having gone behind so early on, what pleased you most about the way you responded, about the way you turned the whole game around in the first half? Because we keep it, we stay in the game, we keep it steady. We knew that it was about possession, it was about finding the right spaces. Um, and we did that, we did that. We, the moment that we start moving the ball around, we create a lot of problems to Newcastle and finding the gaps and the small pockets that our talent players can, can find. And they build well and they play so good football. I'm really proud of them. Be honest now, how much of a smile was there on your face when you saw Harry Kane finally get off the mark in the Premier League? Yeah, I think for all of us, for all of us, for all, all our fans, for our teammates, for, for us as a club, it's important that Harry scores. Um, but Harry goes beyond what he does in the pitch or the way he handles the game is, is so, so important. But we are really, really happy that finally get his goal that he deserved. The game was held up, of course, by an unfortunate medical emergency in the crowd. What credit do your players, do the players of both sides, but perhaps the Spurs players in particular deserve for the way they reacted yeah, yeah, to yeah. it? It was, was, was inst instinctively needed to Eric Dyer, Reggie. We didn't know what's happening on the other side, um, but uh, they reacted. Credit for them, credit for the referee because he made the right decision. Mm -hmm. He made the right decision to stop the game. There's nothing more important than human life, but we know that he's OK, he's stable. And that is so good. You went to speak to the referee, didn't yeah. you? Was that to clarify exactly what was going on and yeah, what was happening to yeah, the game? Just, yeah, just what he was going to do. And he told me definitely the right decision. And just to prepare, we know that um, uh, people were taking care of, of their understand and we have to focus on our job and prepare what's coming up. We have to play seven minutes more, then half time, then second half. We have to keep the players know that he's OK, he's stable. And that is so good. You went to speak to the referee, didn't yeah. you? Was that to clarify exactly what was going on and yeah, what was happening yeah, to the just, game? Yeah, just what he was going to do. And he told me definitely the right decision. And just to prepare, we know that um, uh, people were taking care of, 
of their understanding, then we have to focus on our job and prepare what's coming up. We have to play seven minutes more than half time, then second half. We have to keep the players focused. In that respect, you can be proud of your yeah, players today. Yeah. But turning back to the football, that's back-to-back -back victories now in the Premier League. What sense do you have that your team is adapting, assimilating to the way you want them to play? Um, it's, it's a long process. It's a long process. But I think today we made another step. We react to the goal that we concede. We've been able to play good. We've been able to to um, improve from our previous international break, that was disruption, um, to get back in the rhythm. The players need to play together, so I believe that the more time we spend on the training ground, creating partnerships, improvement will come. Does that make today even more satisfying, Nuno, because of the issues you had to juggle coming into this game off the international yeah, break? Yeah, yeah. Was, 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 was bad but we ended up really well and the players were really professional on the way we had to adapt on our game preparation and they did, a, they did a good job, an amazing job today. Well done today. Thank you, sir. Timmy talks about rhythm and momentum there. Are you seeing small shoots of, <coughs> as Harry Kane was saying, uh, recovery from... Yes, uh, certainly. The in, in the last game against Aston Villa at home, I thought they were decent. It was a fantastic result, obviously. I think you've got to work hard to beat Aston Villa. I think they were a decent side in the Premier League. Um, a dif difficult atmosphere here today. You know, it could have been a difficult game, certainly after the start, Newcastle, Callum Wilson scores. But on the face of the game, when you look at, like I kept saying it before the game, if I was Nuno, I would just say, look, forget all the takeover, forget about the fans, forget about the euphoria. They're still a poor side, and that's the way it turned out. I mean, they never laid a glove on Tottenham, really. I mean, the, the good start they had, they never picked up the momentum, never tackled in midfield. And the third goal killed it, didn't it, really? Absolutely. and. and I just think it was coming, you know, this is all about Mora really, he just changes the pace of it, pass and move there and he gets, they get, he, he end on belly poke, uh, gives it back to him and he just pokes it past Hayden, it's a poor uh, defensive midfield um, tackle there, you just see him here, Look, Lucas just sucks him in, I mean, end on belly gives it back to him, he just sees him, but he comes out here, just dangles his leg, just toes it round him, then he gives it to Harry Kane and Harry's going to put that on the plate for Son, you know, it's a simple tapping. So one goal, one assist for Harry Kane. All three of them were very, very good today, but had nothing to beat. Newcastle were terrible. Yeah, I can't argue with that. I mean, once they stepped up the pace there uh, with the ability of those three, they will cause damage to better defences than Newcastle this season. There's no doubt about that. Um, but when, you, when you're up against it and when you're in a fight in a scrap, you've got to roll his sleeves up and be prepared and stick together and I just they were just too good for Newcastle today particularly up front and when they when they stepped up a gear when they picked the pace up there when they passed and moved it sharp when good players do that it's very difficult to live with them and, and Newcastle didn't have the ability in that back four to, to, uh, to hold them today Another difficult day for Newcastle then and their manager in his 1000th game Steve Bruce Steve commiserations not the way you wanted to mark your milestone in the end how did you see it? Well, certainly we were better, uh, beaten by the better team after a wonderful start. But unfortunately, were, were problems which we've, we've had for a while now. Um, defensively, was was there for everybody to see, unfortunately. So um, the, the goals we give away, you could say, yes, a lot of good play from Tottenham, but some of our defending needed a lot to be desired, to say the least. Does it feel like an opportunity that got away from you today, given the circumstances, plus the way you started the game? I think... Um, I think we've started a few games like that. You know, we've we've got off to a good start. We've scored. We've got our noses in front, and unfortunately, at the moment, we're not able we're not able to defend well enough as a team. Now, I'm not criticising back fours or midfield players. You know, football's a team game, and um, you know, from unfortunately, from front to back at the moment, you know, we're not defending well enough. Um, so we have tried to change. We have tried to be a little bit more uh, on the front foot, if you say if that's the right word these days. Um, um, but it's, it's, um, it's difficult because you can't keep yourself having to score three goals to win a match. Just going away from the football itself for a second, you saw obviously what happened, yeah. or, or, or that there was an unfortunate medical emergency in the crowd at the end of the first half. Do you agree that the players deserve a lot of credit for the way think, they reacted at the time? I think everybody in the ground, full stop, huh? I believe there's a defibrillator on that side of the ground too. Um, thankfully, we're hearing that the, the man is OK. So it puts things into perspective a, a little bit that by the actions of what we've taken these days, 
we've managed, it looks like anyway, good news, which is uh, which I'm delighted for, and of course his family. Well said. Returning to the football, the goal that Spurs scored in the sort of restart period appeared to take the game away from you. How did you see a way back at that point? Well, we needed to score the next one and we needed to give ourselves a chance. And of course, you know, we've, you know, we didn't get it until late en enough from, we huffed and puffed second half, but we never had any real sustained pressure on Spurs at all. They were always seemed to be comfortable. Um, but we stayed with it, stuck with it. And, um, you know, if we had scored maybe another 10 minutes earlier, who'd have, who'd have known, even though, as I said, we were down to 10 men. Going forward, Steve, what is your understanding of your own situation, the likelihood of you being in charge against Palace? Well, that's for other people. That's for other people to decide. You know, if, um, you know, if, if I was reading everything and seeing what we're seeing last week, uh, I might not have been here today. But look, my job is to get a few results. And unfortunately, this year, whether it be a Newcastle manager or whoever manager in the Premier League, M1 and 7 or 8, then you become under pressure, if that's, that's the right word. So it's part and parcel of dealing with being in the Premier League. It's the big league for big boys. And I'll crack on and carry on as best I can until I hear otherwise. How crucial for all concerned, though, that there is some clarity to the situation? Well, that's what needs. Every football club needs clarity. And it needs... It needs uh, from the top, right, the way through to everything that makes a football club the way it is. And, you know, with this, the new owners have been very respectful. You know, I can't say enough of them, of the way they've gone about their business over the last week, 10 days. So, but, it, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, as they say. So we've still got our frailties as a team. And uh, it's up to me, to, in, the, in the near future anyway, to hopefully get better. The fact remains that you've reached a major milestone today. A thousand games and almost a hundred of them with Newcastle United. How do you reflect on that? <laughs> well, I'd love to say it's been a, a, a lovely ride. It's been difficult, but I think I've been the circumstance for a lot of frustration for a lot of years. The people of Newcastle want to see the club move forward. We're in a wonderful opportunity now. And all I've ever wanted was to make sure this great club of ours moves forward um, but that's going to take a little bit of time. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you, Steve. Thank you.